The Himalaya Mountains are perhaps best known as home to Mount Everest. But 15,000 glaciers are also nestled throughout the 1,000-mile mountain range. As Earth's temperature has risen, those glaciers have begun to melt. Projections show them losing as much as 80% of their mass by the end of the century. The ice melt and runoff has already contributed to rising water levels, which have triggered floods in places like Pakistan and India. Here to explain the problem and potential solutions is Peter Clark. He's a distinguished professor of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences at Oregon State University. So, Peter, tell us why should people who live, say, in the United States and other places, not, which is to say, in the Himalayas, why is this so important for them to know about? So there's the standard answer, I think, to that is because as glaciers melt and as ice sheets melt, they are contributing water to sea level rise. And so the reach of the problem in the Himalayas goes global in that case. Um, but so, and even though the contribution from the Himalayan glaciers is relatively small overall, it's still a contribution that's that's important. Um, but another reason we should be concerned is because as these changes occur, um, they are affecting people's livelihoods and, um, you know, the millions of people, the hundreds of millions of people who live in these areas um, and downstream from the high mountainous areas themselves and receiving water from the melting glaciers are being affected by, by these changes. And that might lead to migrations, people moving to other places, which can then start to stress and cause uh you know, various political, geopolitical problems that, again, can have a reach that gets to the U.S. in that regard. India and China are um, the biggest contributors to, or the power generators in the region. How are they affecting this, the, this situation? Yeah, they are the, uh, in the top three of the emitters of carbon to the atmosphere. The U.S., of course, is second. China's first. India's just uh, sort of overtaking the EU in terms of carbon emissions. So ultimately, the problem comes down to the carbon that we're putting in the atmosphere, which is causing the warming, which is causing the glaciers to melt. So a, couple, a large amount of that can be pointed to, a large amount of that warming from the carbon emissions can be pointed to India and China. So at the same time, um, the people in India and China are, um, you know, receiving this water from this mountainous region. And so, although they're certainly contributing to the problem, they're also going to be, as much as anyone, probably strongly affected by the problem. And that's what I wondered, which is, since they will be affected, is that creating, might that create some kind of motivation to actually tackle this problem in the way they might not other if it were more abstract? I think that's where a lot of solutions are going to come from is from the bottom up. And, and um, you know, as societies are impacted, as economies are impacted, um, to the extent that it becomes a real problem for governments, then that's maybe when government action is going to, to really start to kick in. And let's now get to the solutions. First, we uh, spoke to an expert last summer who said a lot of the damage um, is not reversible. Um, let's start with that. Is that true? Is there, where are we in terms of reversible and what can be fixed? And then I've got a follow up. Okay. Um, so, reversible in the long term, not in the short term, uh, assuming we bring carbon emissions down to zero and if we can actually get uh, the CO2 in the atmosphere below present, um, that's when things start to reverse. Um, you know, glaciers are just sensitive to temperature. So, mm -hmm. As you warm temperature, they melt more, and as you cool temperature, they'll melt less and, in fact, start to regrow. And unlike ice sheets, which are very large and have a lot of inertia, glaciers are small and really responsive um, to these changes so that if you are able to reverse uh, the temperature in pointed in the right direction by reversing carbon emissions, um, then it's possible to, to, to change this problem. But it's still going to take, you know, if that happens, it's still talking a long period of time. Uh, but we need to get the CO2 down below present and back to um, you know, pre-industrial levels in order for, for that to happen. And you answered the follow-up in, in that answer about what needs to be done, okay. Professor Clark, uh, professor at Oregon State University. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.